The days of picking up the receiver and hearing the banshee scream of 56K followed immediately by the forlorn wails of whoever was in the middle of an hours long anime music video download are over. And the latest wireless standards are better than ever, claiming to be as fast as running a physical wire. But is wireless AD any good? I mean, ad? Can you believe this? Have you heard about this? Ads in our Wi-Fi? How dare they? I mean, well, okay, hold on a second. They do pay the bills around here, so tell you what. Why don't you watch an ad and see if it's that bad before you make up your mind. Cooler Master's 25th Anniversary Edition Cosmos 2 features a unique dual curved tempered glass side panel. Check it out now at the link below. Let's start this by saying that 802.11 AD is not just a new revision of an existing standard like AC Wave 2 was. You can learn more about that one here. It's actually something new entirely. You see, Wi-Fi to date has traditionally used two major frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. What wireless AD brings to the table is a new frequency, 60 gigahertz, and along with it, speeds of up to 4.6 gigabit per second. And you might even see advertised speeds of up to 7.2 gigabit per second. Although that isn't a new trick from big Wi-Fi. And if you read the fine print, you'll see they're just combining the AD speeds with the other two frequencies. Well, gee, that sounds great, Linus. But isn't five gigahertz already pretty difficult to use through walls? Wouldn't 60 gigahertz be even worse? Yes, yes, it would. The higher the frequency of the radio wave, the harder it is for it to penetrate a non-conductive solid, like a wall or a person. So at a wavelength of only 0.5 centimeters, 60 gigahertz is likely to be absorbed or reflected by basically anything, even very small obstacles. But enough high school science, it's summer and you've got better things to do, right? Like watching us give you these juicy performance numbers from the Netgear R9000 Nighthawk X10 and TP-Link Talon 80 7200. So we fired up iPerf using a script we wrote in order to launch four simultaneous instances and record the output into easily digestible CSV files, testing both routers and our test laptop with 2.4, 5, and 60 gigahertz. It should be noted that because this is an investigation into 802.11 AD performance and not uh, a router roundup, we are focusing on single client performance. Starting with 2.4 gigahertz, we can see that we're really struggling to maintain a stable speed. Each of the four iPerf streams is competing with each other for bandwidth. Five gigahertz, on the other hand, was nice and clean, about what you'd expect from a wired connection, albeit a slower one. 60 gigahertz, whoa, screaming fast, as advertised, but, we did note quite a bit of variation between our streams and our Netgear test chart here perfectly demonstrates something that wasn't advertised that we will get to momentarily. Comparing the averages, both of our routers were more or less on par with each other in every spectrum and moving on to our file copy tests, we found more predictable results. 802.11 AD gives a significant real world boost in speed over the five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz bands. Similar, in fact, to wired speeds. Cool. But where we depart from the wire is in signal integrity. As part of our testing, we tried to see how far we could go before losing out on our big speed upgrade. And for this, we had to venture into the dreaded realm of the outside world. So then, to test range, we set up our Netgear Nighthawk on our brand new picnic table, fired up iPerf, and started walking. After an arduous 63.5 foot trek, the 60 gigahertz signal dropped altogether, 
rip signal. 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz were still going strong with connection rates of 866 and 300 megabit per second respectively. The TP-Link Talon, same deal. Picnic table, iPerf, walking, and just before we keeled over from exhaustion at 90 feet, well, we didn't drop the signal, but we might as well have because performance wasn't much better on 60 gigahertz than it was on 2.4. But I mean, that's not too bad. My house is less than 60 feet across. One small problem though, it has stuff in it. So let's simulate then stuff in the way. We used the Netgear router box as our first obstruction before we added, <laughs> Wait, what? Are you serious? The box caused the 60 gigahertz signal to drop out. All it has in it is cardboard and paper. As for the TP-Link, oh, okay, here we get a better result. Latency increased a little bit, but otherwise it was still connected. Okay then, how about a computer monitor? Again, the Netgear dropped out and the TP-Link kept on trucking. Okay, how about just turning your back to the router? Okay, here we go. This is where both routers failed. This much sexy human body is just too much for our poor 60 gigahertz signal. So then TP-Link wins thanks to its array of eight freaking antennas, right? Mom. Let's take the fight back indoors. In my office, Netgear's obstruction avoidance strategy of bouncing Wi-Fi signals around allowed it to go from struggling to penetrate a folded up tablecloth to delivering solid performance to a client directly behind my monitor. So, AD Wireless then. There are some obvious early adopter hassles, like limited availability of compatible clients and high costs. And, <laughs> Piling on top of that, there are some less obvious hassles, like probably needing to run a cable to the middle of your ceiling to get your access point line of sight to everyone in the room. But in certain applications, we definitely see the potential here, and I am pretty stoked to see like home mesh networking solutions based on this tech as an alternative finally to this kind of nonsense. But. As for whether you're ready for a wireless AD router today, well, I think it's safe to say that that's still up in the air. There's never been a better time to join Dollar Shave Club. For a limited time, new members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter that goes on clear so you can see what you're doing for only $5 with free shipping. And after that, your razors are just a few bucks a month. That's a $15 value for only five bucks. So in that first box, you get an awesome hefty quality handle, you get a full cassette of four cartridges and the tube of shave butter. And with Dollar Shave Club, there are no hidden fees and no commitments. You can cancel looking great anytime you want. So get a great, <laughs> so get a great shave at a great price and have it conveniently delivered right to your door. Head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus and give them a try today. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed. Maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Wait, what the f Oh, seriously? Oh, cool. Also down there, we've got a link to our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.